As always with brand new games, when I'm given a code before release, this game was given to me in time for the review and embargo process. So thank you to EA for giving me a code, but more importantly, I was not paid for my views at all. My views are mine and mine alone. In 2008, a new IP named Dead Space entered the survival horror arena. Tense, engaging, and well-paced, this suspenseful sci-fi masterpiece was lauded for its incredible art direction and especially for its sound design. Its silent protagonist Isaac Clarke allowed players to step into the shoes of an everyman, projecting their own personality into an utterly terrifying situation. The game was a critical success, the starting point of a franchise that spawned sequels, spin-offs, and even comic books before before being shelved by EA. 15 years later, and Dead Space has been completely remade from the ground up. EA Motive built this remake in a brand new graphical engine, with stunning aesthetic results. But is a remake warranted when the original still holds up and is fairly accessible today? Well, in my opinion, when the developers put as much care, attention, and passion into a remake as they did with Dead Space, the answer is an unequivocal yes. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist, where we don't just beat the games, we complete them. At this point, remakes and reboots are a way of life. Some are straightforward graphical upgrades, some are lazy ports, and a few emerge as something entirely new. This Dead Space remake is the latest example, taking a beloved game from a few console generations ago and completely rebuilding it to reflect the power of the latest technology. Now, I've covered Dead Space several times over my career as the completionist, and every time I have given the original Dead Space game my completionist rating of finish it. But with the Dead Space remake, I'm officially changing that rating. This game gets my completionist rating of complete it. This is justified because of across the board quality of life improvements. And for me, this game addresses a long standing personal grievance by actually including a completion bonus for those who go above and beyond. For both veterans of the franchise and newbies, this version is the definitive way to experience Dead Space. Let's begin. Yes! All glory goes to the winner! Dead Space is a modern classic of its genre. Its setting and unconventional protagonist helped it stand out. And though its sequels would eventually abandon the original roots in favor of more action-oriented tropes, it remains an incredibly fun game to play. You may find yourself asking, as I did as well, what is the point of this remake? As much as I love Dead Space, and to be clear, I love Dead Space, does this really need to exist? This game takes the concept of a remake and dismembers it to its core. Say what you will about EA, I know I have, but it seems like every creative at EA Motive Studios involved in this process put their heart and soul into the creation of this remake. By keeping the core gameplay but streamlining and improving everything surrounding it, Dead Space becomes a richer experience. The plot is rife with horror tropes, but is still engaging. Isaac Clarke, systems engineer extraordinaire, arrives on the Planet Cracker class ship, the USG Ishimura, to find that things are not what he and his crewmates expected. Instead of reuniting with his girlfriend Nicole and finishing a routine job, he instead encounters terrifying space monsters called necromorphs, hell-bent on murdering everything they encounter. Isaac grabs the nearest available tools to slice, dice, and hack his way across the Ishimura, exploring all over the ship to get things in working order again. He'll try and get to the bottom of what the actual hell necromorphs are doing here, and do his best to save whoever he can. Spoilers, it's no one. 
Everyone does. Now the story in Remake has been improved and refined, but the gameplay of Dead Space has always been the highlight and remains so here. Instead of just blasting zombies in the face with a pistol, Isaac must take necromorphs apart limb from limb to be an effective combatant. Conventional weaponry is out in favor of plasma cutters and other mining tools. Isaac can also zap enemies with a slow motion blast of stasis, chuck explosive barrels with kinesis, a wild swing with whatever weapon is equipped, and a massive full body boot stomp that feels just as impactful here as it did 15 years ago. Look, just to get ahead of things here, I'm gonna have to be very careful with what I show on screen due to YouTube's latest rounds of restrictive demonetization policies. I'd love to show you just how gory, bloody, and satisfying Isaac's mighty boot stop can be. But in the meantime, enjoy this artist's rendering of me battling a necromorph. Shoutouts to Jetpack Bragan for being my incredible thumbnail artist and valued TOBG member here at the company. Take it away, Jetpack. Uh, okay. Um, well, well, you know what? Let's revisit this idea later. You, you get the idea. When he's not ripping the limbs off of necromorphs, Isaac moves from section to section of the Ishimura, putting out fires, sometimes literally. Due to sabotage and the uncaring nature of deep space, the mega ship is falling apart. The thrust of the action involves taking a tram somewhere, encountering a problem that needs solving, and then solving it, either by finding an item or talking to an NPC to receive the next objective. The original Dead Space felt linear, but in a way that roller coasters are linear. A haunted house thrill ride with twists and turns that is fueled by adrenaline and great world building. The Ishimura is very iconic, its corridors and living areas fully burned into my memory. Every vent and dark corridor feels like it's there for a reason. Environmental design is a major strength and just one of the reasons why Dead Space resonated with sci-fi fans and still does today. The developers referenced movies like Alien, The Thing, and Event Horizon as touchstones and their influence is clearly felt. Dead Space has always looked fantastic and its sound design was award winning. This remake pushes things even further, making a game that's always looked and sounded great to suddenly even more jaw dropping. I completed Dead Space 2023 on my PC and I have a pretty beastly gaming PC, rocking an AMD processor with a really good Nvidia 3080. This game ran beautifully and almost flawlessly. That said, unless you've got a pretty souped up machine, maybe pick it up on a PS5 or an Xbox Series X or S, because this may be one of the most computationally demanding games on the market if you run it out with max settings, which I did. The striking aesthetics and settings stood out in 2008, but it was the gory, addictive, dare I say visceral gameplay that made Dead Space a hit. The remake keeps this core feeling intact, but modernizes everything around it. EA Motive understood that Dead Space fans are passionate and actually went to them for feedback during development. The studio created a community council of diehard fans to bounce ideas off of. They came at them with a clear goal of trying to understand who they were reaching out with this remake. Motive's goal, if you can take the PR speak on their website seriously, was to rebuild the game from scratch with the mantra of never ever betraying the original as the guiding light. The concept is noble and something that I think developers creating future remakes should really consider. This title also serves as a showcase of the brand new Frostbite engine and credit where it's due. Creative director Ramon Campos Oriola said that we want the fans of Dead Space to rediscover Dead Space as if it was for the first time. And that's exactly what they accomplished here. I've always enjoyed in completing Dead Space. And if anyone's counting, I have completed it twice for this show, now a third time. I've always considered the game to be a finish it experience. This remake changes that. Completing Dead Space Remake is a much more fulfilling process overall. The steps are very similar, but different enough that completing the game feels way more satisfying. There are 47 achievements in Dead Space Remake, most of them returning from the original game. Several are story related, and a few are tied to defeating enemies using specific weapons. Outside of achievements, there are also dozens of collectibles to find, from audio and text logs of desperate crew members, to weapon schematics, to good old Pang. I also know I'll have to find and spend dozens of power nodes to upgrade every single tool to maximum power. I know that I'll have to complete the game at least three playthroughs. Once on any difficulty, one more time on New Game Plus, and a third time in Impossible Mode. Now, Impossible Mode has been revamped in the remake, adding in the factor that the game will nuke your save if you get killed. This kind of combines Dead Space 1's Impossible Mode with Dead Space 2's Hardcore Mode. This Iron Man run is a beast and should not be taken lightly. 
Because the original achievements are also included, I know I'll need to do a playthrough using only Isaac's Plasma Cutter. This single weapon run is a limiting element for sure, and one that is always factored into my overall rating. But that's not all. Side quests and new collectibles have been added. Additional story content fleshes out Isaac's relationship with Nicole and the origins of the Unitologist threat. And this 2023 remake even includes an alternate ending. Look, I thought I knew Dead Space inside and out. This remake taught me that I was wrong. You might have seen footage of Dead Space that makes it seem like a one-to-one -one remake, but saying that simplifies the entire game to a very different experience. The third-person, over-the-shoulder, run-and-gun gameplay is mostly untouched, sure, but how the remake touches up the story is impressive. Joe Barry, senior writer on the game, told IGN that the writers had the same goal as the art team, to give the narrative the same kind of glow-up that everything else had. They did, and it works. Now, spoiler warning here, I'm gonna be talking about some of the story adjustments made and how they compare to the original game. If you've already played the original Dead Space and you're worried about spoilers, don't stress. Main plot beats are fundamentally the exact same, so there's not much to spoil in that regard. The most notable change out the gate is that Isaac, formerly a silent protagonist in this game, now has a voice. Gunnar Wright, who voiced Isaac in the original Dead Space 2 and 3, has returned to the role. It's a small change that has a big impact and serves the game on every level. Isaac goes from being someone who just went where they were told to go without even questioning or a grunt of acknowledgement to an actual human being, an actual character. He speaks when spoken to and we care about him as a result. He's got motivation and can play off other characters very well, giving them more depth and making the world feel that much richer. Rewriting the entire script has a trickle-down effect of fleshing out several other characters as well. Characters like computer specialist Kendra Daniels and horticulturist Elizabeth Cross are now even more present in the story. With actual scenes and dialogue, instead of just appearing in video logs or text blogs, Dr. Mercer is back and his icy demeanor is extra creepy. He is way more menacing here than the original game. As far as I'm concerned, I already bought into the relationship between Isaac and Nicole and thought the final cutscene twist was very effective. But the remake helps that twist land even better by providing Isaac and Nicole a direct connection to in-game events. I also appreciate that Isaac and Nicole are now modeled after their voice actors in Dead Space 2 and 3 helping bring the entire series together. Their relationship feels so much more mature, but not just because the characters have been aged up a bit. You can really feel the strain of long distance and the stress both characters have gone under. Huge shout outs to Gunnar Wright and Tanya Clark for reprising their roles flawlessly and adding extra depth to every interaction. Nicole and Isaac's connection to the cult of Unitology is laid out explicitly and it's brought up earlier in the story too. I appreciate the direct approach this remake takes towards folding in this evil cult to the original plot. Isaac's mother is a former Unitologist who unfortunately went insane and killed Isaac's father and herself. Isaac blames Nicole on some level for this as one of her roles aboard the Ishimura was helping people escape the Unitologists. The writers lay the groundwork of the church's involvement much earlier, which helps make the entire game feel so damn cohesive. Now, full disclosure, my first playthrough was my plasma cutter run, and the second playthrough is when I opened up my arsenal to include every single weapon. But I did notice an additional collectible during my new game plus playthrough, marker fragments. These mini replicas of the marker are creepy, and every single one of them has a cryptic description in Isaac's inventory. I tended to find them in locations associated with Unitology, like a secret chamber in the office of Captain Benjamin Matthias, who was a Unitologist. I had a hunch that these new collectibles were associated with the rumored new secret ending, which is tied to an achievement called Reunion, which if you pay attention to anything that the Unitologists are muttering at you the entire game, yeah, sounds terrifying. Hey Jetpack, can we try one more time here? Can I get a artist's rendering of me as Isaac being horrified at the depravity of the Unitologists sacrificing the living for their death cult? Well, that's all right. Uh, well, uh, you know, well, we're certainly getting there uh, and at least it won't get flagged. So uh, moving on. My second playthrough really forced me to pay attention in a new way that I was not expecting. 
Now, I'm a careful player most of the time. Maybe not when I'm doing a let's play of a game blindly and I'm worried about what I'm doing all the time to perform for the audience that's watching. But I went into the new game plus ready to throw caution to the wind. The addition of new collectibles that actually had an impact on the story is a great example of how to make this game feel fresh again. Dead Space is not completely reimagining its story like Final Fantasy VII Remake does, but the tweaks and adjustments helped me appreciate both what I liked in the original and the changes made in this version. The new story fixes a bunch of plot holes and makes the entire Dead Space experience richer. But what also struck me over the course of completing this remake are the subtle gameplay tweaks that make playing an already fun game even more enjoyable. When I heard about this remake, I wondered who it was for. After completing it, I realized I wouldn't want to play it any other way. There are many, many quality of life improvements added. These improvements not only make completing the game more satisfying, they feel forward thinking and like EA Motive actually cares about the legacy of Dead Space. Shocking, I know. Not everything is completely perfect, but pretty damn close. The improvements are very noticeable. The biggest one that I know I'm not alone in agreeing with, the map, the reworked map. Instead of this weird 3D one that projects in front of Isaac, this version has been reimagined as a flat 2D map, like you'd pretty much find in any other game like this. It's pretty rad too, because you can map a map button to a controller because of all the awesome customization options. It's a subtle shift, but this makes the game significantly easier to play. The hunt for collectibles and schematics became much more enjoyable since I wasn't battling the map and the locations I hadn't been to. My only wish was I wanted the ability to place my own markers on the map and thus changing my pointer objective as well. It is simple to track objectives and side quests, but there is no way to mark a location to revisit later on or to make a note of yourself that there's a creepy piece of unitologist graffiti to translate later or maybe a, a locked door or something that I can't visit yet. The way power nodes are used is also changed completely for the better. In the original game, power nodes were an uncommon currency. Isaac used them to upgrade weapons and unlock special emergency supply rooms. Upgrading weapons with nodes was a necessity, but there were also empty node sockets that didn't provide an immediate benefit. In this remake, that's gone. Every node you place to upgrade of a weapon has an immediate tangible effect on gameplay. Another change is that in the original Dead Space, Kinesis, Stasis, and Rig Armor all had their own unique power node boards. In this version, they are all combined together. Another smart and efficient shift. Nodes are no longer used to open doors, making them exclusively weapon and rig upgrade items. But that doesn't mean that every room is suddenly available for Isaac to ransack. Instead, there are doors, lockers, and supply containers that require special security clearances to open, which Isaac obtains over the course of the plot. Isaac cannot access these at first, but this points to yet another big change. The Ishimura is now officially fully interconnected. Instead of finishing chapters and only progressing forward, you can now unlock shortcuts back to the tram and revisit parts of the ship whenever you'd like. This is another difference that makes the world feel that much more realistic. Granted, being in a spaceship isn't realistic, but you know what I mean. Isaac, the character, is defined by his actions. As a systems engineer, he is capable, a natural problem solver, someone in his position, even in this nightmare scenario, would probably want to go and check up on stuff he'd fixed in other locations, even if he's just doing some routine necromorph clearing maintenance. Making the issue more and more interconnected also makes the game's presentation as one long take even more cinematic. Dead Space has always been a highly watchable game, and now it can be completed in one unbroken shot. For my impossible mode playthrough, this single shot sensibility is basically canon since I had to do the whole game without dying. Other mechanics have been reworked with what I deem better, but not quite perfect. The zero gravity stuff is still a little disorienting, though easier to play through overall. The designers apparently took inspiration from the Sandra Bullock film Gravity for these sections, and it shows. I loved actually being able to float through the air with my little jet boosters instead of just doing the single big space jump. It's also incredibly scary to see a flailing necromorph come flying at you from the other side of the room, scream slightly muted, and to try and blast it before it smacks right into you is very funny. 
Weapons this time around have been upgraded to have extra bonus effects as well. The Plasma Cutter can be upgraded to apply fire damage that stacks if you hit enemies enough times with it, which is awesome. This creates more versatility and use for your favorite weapons, and encourages players to test things out. Alternate fire modes for almost every tool have been reworked. I walked away with a brand new appreciation for every weapon in this version, instead of just having one or two favorites, which is great because necromorphs are the worst and deserve to be exterminated. Every one of these horrifying monsters qualifies to be set ablaze and then launched into the great vacuum of space. In fact, uh, Jetpack, can I get a artist's rendering of me torching a Weezer and laughing maniacally? Uh, well, you know what? Um. That's not what I asked for, but uh, you know what? Um, I love it. Keep up the great work, Jetpack. A few problem sections of the original game have also been reworked entirely with stunning results. There's that section about partway through the game where a bunch of critical systems for the Ishimura are failing, including the ship's ability to automatically destroy incoming meteors and debris. In the original game, Isaac had to go to the bridge and blast asteroids before the ship got shredded. In this remake, Isaac instead tells Captain Hammond that he'll manually calibrate each turret himself. This feels much more in character, like Isaac is offering a solution that Hammond would never think of. This leads to a short, fun gameplay segment in the vacuum of space where Isaac links his tools to these massive guns to teach them how to aim again. These mechanical changes are such a great and well-appreciated welcome, and I firmly believe will create a new generation of Dead Space fans. The changes bring Dead Space Remake in line with modern games without dampening or sacrificing the terror, horror, or creativity of the original. Driving this point home, Dead Space Remake manages to feel novel even after multiple playthroughs. I spent a lot of time crawling through the innards of the Ishimura. I peeled the skin off of hundreds of necromorphs. I respect my mining tools a dozen times, finding my favorites and developing new strategies along the way. I dealt with betrayals and psychological mind fuckery, and through it all, I remained impressed just by how fun Dead Space Remake remains to play. Many people who will play this remake are probably familiar with the original, but the remake finds new ways to keep the experience feeling novel for completionists. The way collectible locations have shifted slightly from the original provides a little dose of serotonin in the mists of carnage and chaos. Even the hunt for Pang to earn the There's Always Pang achievement became more of an engaging search as I looked for environmental clues. The developers were clearly thinking about their core audience of returning Dead Space experts who would want to be frightened all over again. Also, the unsung hero of this game is how well it balances the lighting in each and every room. Even with the brightness turned up a fair amount, I couldn't see sh and I was scared the entire time. Some sections have been altered significantly, like the entire part with the USG Valor, another doomed spaceship. The layout has been changed a fair amount, and the shooting minigames have been completely erased and replaced with a straight up survival section. I love being kept on my toes in an area that originally was relatively quiet. And then there's impossible mode. In the original version, impossible mode was more like ultra hard difficulty. It was tough, but if you knew how to plan ahead and conserve ammunition, you could muddle through it without too much trouble. This remake's impossible mode has hard mode difficulty, so not that bad, but there is the twist that if you die, your game save is wiped. People always talk about how scary Dead Space is and continues to be. The remake's technical director, David Robillard, even revealed in a Games Radar interview that when I'm playing it at night, I can't play it with headphones. It's just too fucking scary. This remake in particular is a masterclass in creating an atmosphere that amps up the terror in every respect. But even so, when you play through the game three or four times in literally less than a week where you have to get a whole video out as soon as possible, you lose a little of that fear along the way. That is, until I started playing impossible mode. I suddenly found myself paranoid and immersed all over again. I was terrified of what was around every corner or crawling across the walls, because if I died in impossible mode, I would have to restart the entire game. No more cavalierly melting enemies with the contact beam. No more running headlong into rooms to gather credits. I felt like I was reverting back to my scared college self, playing Dead Space alone for the very first time without any knowledge of what was coming up next. Impossible mode made those big scary set piece moments way more terrifying. 
The tentacles that burst through the walls and drag Isaac away are an instant kill if you can't break the hold fast enough. Any single slip up can cost you your entire run and literal hours of your life. Now there's only one achievement associated with impossible difficulty, but it is absolutely the most harrowing thing I went through as I completed Dead Space Remake. Yet surviving the absolute hell that was impossible mode felt like a massive triumph. And mind you, I did this in the environment of having the game before the rest of the world. It almost feels like I was an explorer finding something brand new and claiming it as my own. Except I'm, I'm not claiming anything because I'm I just completed the game. I didn't think I'd find something to be truly scared about in this remake, but being blindsided by and overcoming terror in a game that I thought I knew front to back is something to celebrate. Okay, so for would-be completionists approaching this series for the very first time, I have a couple of notes for you. I did the plasma gun run for my first playthrough, but only because I knew it was a necessary achievement. If you're coming to this game cold, I recommend taking your time on the first playthrough, maybe on normal mode, maxing out every weapon as much as you can, and trying to earn as many achievements as possible for attempting the plasma gun run on New Game Plus. When you finish the game and then start a New Game Plus run, players can start the game ahead of the curve with 10 extra nodes and 50,000 credits, so they can feel empowered for a second or even third playthrough. Also, a sixth and final rig upgrade is awarded upon beating the game, granting Isaac a new skin that makes him look like Deadshot, which, hey, it's extremely cool. For the alternate ending achievement related to earning the secret ending, I do want to give a shout out to a few friends who really helped me get this done. Susie the Sphere Hunter and I traded tips back and forth and shared notes about where to find these new collectibles. She's a fellow Dead Space diehard and I could not have done it without her help. But the true heroes that supported me were the fine folks over at Power Picks. Now for those of you guys who don't know, Power Picks is one of the best YouTube channels out there to help you with guides on all stuff for modern games. They were so kind enough to give me a lot of their work so I could help optimize my run. They saved me so much time in moments of need where I was just lost or confused. To be clear, without going crazy, I found a majority of the collectibles on my own, but the folks at Power Picks helped me across the finish line. In the end, we discovered one big thing. Even though we had all 12 of these markers, we could not trigger the alternate ending. Except, I figured out how. The way to trigger the alternate ending is a little involved. Once you've found all 12 marker fragments in New Game Plus, you have to visit the office of Captain Matthias. From there, you're gonna see on a desk a gigantic marker filled with 12 candles. When you approach this pedestal, there's an activate prompt. Doing so will then remove all 12 markers and place them onto the candles. Creepy vibes will come flying at you, whispers being chanted at you, then from there, all you have to do is beat the story like normal, eventually battling and defeating the hive mind on the planet's surface. That's when things get a little freaky. Warning, here is the alternate ending in Dead Space Remake. Upon escaping the planet by himself, Isaac starts having a conversation with Nicole, who clearly is not there. She asks him if they're going home, and he says, of course. He just wants to build her something special first. As Isaac begins setting a course and piloting the spaceship, the camera rotates behind him and Nicole places her hand on his shoulder. We then see the literal writing on the wall as scribbles of unitology text are revealed to be scrawled all over the ship. I love these chilling hints at an alternate future and I wonder what it might mean if EA Motive decides to go ahead with a Dead Space 2 remake somewhere down the line. Even though this cutscene was short, I thought it was a worthy reward. Heading into impossible mode, I had 46 out of 47 achievements, and I'm glad that that was the only thing I had to worry about. I could only focus on the task of survival, and the reward for doing so this time around is incredible. My favorite completion bonus, maybe of all time, the hand cannon makes a stunning return here. This unlimited ammo, super powerful gun was a completion reward from Dead Space 2, and it's back in all of its awesome glory. This foam finger makes Isaac literally say, pew pew, bang bang, as a sound whenever you pull the trigger and blasts enemies apart like they're pinatas. 
It is the perfect way to decompress. A cathartic release of tension, especially after Dead Space has you by the throat for the last dozen hours. I can't believe they brought this bonus into Dead Space 1. It's a great reference to one of the most memorable aspects of the Dead Space franchise and shows that EA Motive isn't afraid to embrace their goofy side. Alongside the hand cannon is another unlockable awesome suit. It's called the Burnished Suit. Now look, I'll be fully transparent, I haven't played Dead Space 3 since its launch, and maybe someday I will here on the channel. But I think this suit is a reference to a few characters or one of the characters' suits, Carver, from Dead Space 3. It's a pretty badass suit, and in the end, it feels like a great reward. One of the best things I love about Dead Space Remake is that even if you're starting the game brand new, Impossible Mode is playable from the very start, and it tells you that there is a reward at the very end. Very fulfilling. So as we wrap things up, I want to clarify the timeline that I spent completing this game. I played this game completely three and a half times. Why three and a half? Well, my first run was on normal mode and that took me about 17 hours. My second run was on New Game Plus and that was about 14 hours. Impossible mode was painful and exhausting and it was a struggle, but it took me about 12 hours. I finally finished and earned the final achievement. So where did that half come through? Well, <laughs> as you can imagine, uh, I died on impossible mode and I had to start over, which cost me about six to eight hours. And the death was so ridiculous, I have to share it with you at home. To give an idea, I say half a run, but in actuality, I was probably about three fourths of the way through the game. I was on chapter 10, wrapping things up, and I took a break to go get lunch, to come back, and when I reloaded my game save, this happened. There was nothing I could do. I was just screwed. All that time gone, and I have to just redo it. And I was so frustrated, I was so mad, but I realized it wasn't my fault. There was something weird with the game. I have to accept it and move on. By applying all the skills I have mastered over the several years of me playing Dead Space 1, Dead Space 2, and now Remake, I was able to complete this game as quick as I could. But even for newcomers, earning all 47 achievements is completely doable if you take your time and do not freak out from the fear. Be patient, be diligent, and one day you too can point foam fingers at bodies and shout, pew pew bang bang. Dead Space Remake is somehow exactly what I expected and so much more. It's a testament to what a big studio can achieve when they throw their full weight behind a project. It just might take the sting away from how EA murdered this franchise in the first place. It is beautiful, bloody, and brilliant. There are surprises and welcome quality of life changes and enough to chew on to make completing this game feel actually very satisfying. Thank you so much for watching, and now I'm gonna go stare at some dogs in the park or something else that's really happy. If you like this video, please check out my New Game Plus video on Dead Space and Dead Space 2, and hey, for something completely different, take a look at my Callisto Protocol video. I appreciate you all, and now I'm gonna go sleep. Bye.